Honestly, this is so small and floating. Hey guys, today we are talking about another tool from Miniware and over the years I came to love Miniware products because they hit that sweet point between a quality, price and the features for makers. So behind me you can see a selection of the tools from Miniware that I already own and love from the really really impressive ES121 screwdriver which I use over time to a hot plate which is absolutely cute but today we're going to talk about this little fella and uh, this is Miniware DS123 oscilloscope. Now a small disclaimer guys I haven't got a clue how to use a proper oscilloscope. While I can interpret the waveforms and figure out what's going on in the screen and what is supposed to be going on the screen, uh, the truth is that all those knobs available and buttons on the proper units, they confuse me and I never had enough time to actually spend some time with it and learn it. So this review guide to using the S213 uh, is coming from someone that is just getting started. So chances are if you're more experienced with the scopes than me, well, you'll have to forgive the beginner's approach. And I know some of you will be tempted to advise me to get a slightly more expensive or better unit, which opens even more functions, but let's face it, when using tools, it's all about scope of what you need for your projects. And so far, that's been working just great. I'll be honest with you guys, it's all about the size of the scope. It's not because I wanted to put it in my pocket and take it to work and show off. No, wait a minute. That's also about that. But I'm running out of space on my desk and, well, size does matter. I already got rid of the soldering station in favor of TS80 soldering iron. You can watch the review in there because I don't do enough soldering. And the case is going to be the same with oscilloscope, something I'm going to use on occasion but I'm going to save myself a lot of trouble by having the ability to troubleshoot the electronics and come up with, well, probably explanation why certain things aren't working as supposed to. Just like all the miniware tools, it feels great in hand, it's made of metal and it feels sturdy. You could probably survive a drop or two, especially that they've sent me this nice silicon cover that you can put it on and make it even more rugged. Now this is 4 channel oscilloscope which means you'll be able to display 4 waveforms at the same time. Just bear in mind there are 2 digital channels and 2 analog channels. It has 100 mega samples per second and 15 megahertz of bandwidth. I know in the world of oscilloscopes those are not the most impressive statistics, however considering the size and the fact that I'm mostly doubling with simple electronics for home automation this is more than I need. If I ever come to the point that I need more sophisticated equipment, well, that's gonna make a great addition to my portable toolbox, while the proper oscilloscope will eventually end up on my desk, taking all the space. But getting back to the unit. It comes with a built-in battery, which is gonna last you a couple of hours, and a 7.5 inch display, which isn't a touchscreen, but has enough buttons around to make it functional. In the box you will also find two probes, which you can obviously attach to the oscilloscope uh, with attachments and color rings to identify different channels. Very nice. Looking at the unit itself, the only complaint I could really issue to Miniware at this point is Come on guys, where is USB Type-C? It's 2021. Well, we'll have to wait for DS214, I guess. Anyway, back to the oscilloscope. Now, I'm not going to evaluate this oscilloscope in terms of accuracy, mostly because I lack proper experience and equipment to do so. What, what I'm going to show you is how to use this oscilloscope and how to tack a random problem. So let's get familiar with the oscilloscope and its options, and if you're more experienced, please forgive me all the mistakes and, uh, well, correct me in the comments if I said something wrong. Well, let's talk about the interface. You'll find two scroller wheels, which you'll use to navigate around, and uh, four buttons. On the screen you have three sections with different menus. You've got top menu, right hand side menu, and the bottom menu. Now to move around different menus you use the scroll wheel B. You'll uh, switch over that blinking icon to a different position. It goes all the way around so you can adjust wherever you need it. Once in a position you want to adjust, you can use the scroll wheel A to change the value of wherever you're adjusting. 
to help yourself you also have a couple of buttons which to be honest they do look like mp3 player or something like that so they labeled k1 k2 k3 and k4 play and pause basically uh, starts and freezes the waveform on the screen uh, second button the k2 opens the menu which lay, uh, lets you save or load the waveform to the storage which you can also access from a computer you'll find additional volume brightness and sleep to uh, power down time duration in here as well you can confirm that with k3 or close it with k2 now k3 has a special function which lets you uh, select different channels you'll notice that there are different colors on here so there's a blue corresponding with channel a there is a yellow which corresponds with channel b channel c and channel d now in this mode right now you'll see that v trigger is blue which means it's going to be triggering uh, when uh, there is a signal from the channel a if you want to change that just hit k3 and you'll see that changes color to corresponding different uh, channels so we're going to stay with the channel a because that's what i'm going to use in a second lastly uh, there is obviously a button uh, here k4 which acts like a shortcut or like a function key when you press you have access to the following shortcuts if you press function k4 and first button and i'll take a screenshot and save it to a storage press k4 again and the second one that will save the waveform you can recover that waveform later and use for mathematical operations lastly press k4 again and the third button and i'll start calibrating the unit it only takes a couple of moments to complete now that you know your way around let's talk about individual menus and for that we need to generate a waveform so i'm just going to connect one probe to out a second probe to the channel a which is going to be blue hook up my grounds together to get a reference points and hook together uh, the probes as well and you will see that right now on the screen we have a sine wave with 200 hertz frequency on the screen you will see the waveform waiting for us it's tiny the reason the value is so tiny because my probe is sent to 10 times so let's switch it back to one time because i'm going to use a lower voltage now that the correct setting is applied it looks much better so let's talk about what's on the screen each channel on the screen has a corresponding color the channel a is blue channel b is yellow channel c is violet and channel d is green right now i'm only displaying channel uh, blue which is channel a in the dc coupling now you can change the coupling uh, to ac and what it will do it will shift the center of the point to the middle of the axis so the oscilloscope will try to recognize the ac behavior of the wave and shift it to the middle of the axis so that's the difference so let's go back to the dc because that's what we're going to be working on below that we have the reference right now every grid on the screen is one volt in reference if i'm going to change that to two volts obviously the scale will change and the entire thing is going to be so much smaller we can specify an operation mode of each channel in here now there's another thing that we can change if we keep scrolling you'll notice that we're going to also have a settings for 10 time probe so if you set the setting to 10 time and your probe to 10 time you're going to have much better experience in that regard while settings for the first two channels are the same settings for the digital channels the channel c and d are slightly different and will let you clone the wave and make different operations on the waves as well so you can use basic uh, mathematical operations between waves that's interesting especially that you can load the wave from the memory and then uh, play with these options exposition means uh, position on the x-axis and we can simply scroll up and down along the wave depending on where we are in the timeline v trigger defines which channel we are using to trigger our uh, display so in order to change that we're hitting K k3 button and we will be triggering on different channels so right now this is uh, channel uh, c that's channel d and we're going back to some uh, channel a now next up is the uh, type of the trigger that we're using this is a raising edge we have a falling uh, falling edge and a couple of other settings that you can use which will define when the oscilloscope will uh, grab the signal halt it for us 
how the waveform is presented or where it's stopped is being defined by the operational mode. Right now it's in auto, so the oscilloscope is trying to do its own thing. Uh, if we're going to change it to slow, it will slow down the display of the waveform to show us what is happening. If you switch from auto to normal, uh, then it will uh, start with the trigger and then stop once it's uh, run out of uh, well, timeline. Then we have our sample rate, which basically means the resolution that we're looking at the waveform. Uh, so let's go back to uh, outer and let's change the resolution to something bigger. Next up is the actual settings for the uh, waveform generator. So I have a triangle wave, but I can have, I don't know, sinusoid, well, wave or square wave. And then below I can uh, adjust the frequency of it. If I explain the options on the right hand side panel, let's go all the way down to the bottom uh, because there's some inf important information in here. Now the bottom menu is split into two sections. Those two menus are responsible for the time and those two menus are responsible for the voltage. So you could think about them working on different axes, X and Y axis. Now you will see that this oscilloscope is already giving us information about the sine wave, which is um, basically displayed uh, as 100 Hertz wave, which corresponds to our setting. And its cycle is 10 milliseconds, which also corresponds to what's on the screen right now. Now in regards to voltage, the average voltage is 1 volt 0.44. And this is because this is 3 volt uh, wave and obviously it's oscillates, so the average is going to be somewhere in between. And the max voltage is uh, about 2.88 volts. So these values can be adjusted as well. So right now I set them all to be displaying for this channel, but you can change that like uh, we did before with K3 buttons for different channels. Obviously that's gonna be useless right now because I don't have anything on any other channels. Same goes for the voltage voltages, where uh, on the voltage time, we can have minimum and maximum voltage, we can have an average, we can have a battery for the device, and the delta V. Delta V I'm going to talk in a second. I'm gonna leave the delta V because we're jumping into that side menu. YP is the position of the wave or position of the reference point. Uh, the best way to explain it is right now the position of the reference point is where the ground is, directly in the middle. Now, if I were to change the scale of this uh, waveform, so let's see, uh, let's change that to maybe 0.5 volts then you'll see that the top of the sine wave is cut off and I can't see it. To display entire wave again, I can go back to my reference point, YP, and lower it. So I'm gonna bring it one volt down or maybe one and a half volt down. So because this is a half volt per square, I have half, one, one and a half volt down from the ground level. So this is my new ground level. And you can see that way I could squeeze the entire wave on the screen. So this is my new ground point for this wave. If I want to display a reference point for a different channel, I can just uh, change it and I'll produce me a new label and display new offset point. Below that, I can um, enable veneers or, or rulers and start taking some other measurements. So. Let's go to V1 and uh, put it on the peak. And let's go to V2, K3 to enable, and put it at the bottom of it. Now you'll see that shows me that the delta V between two lines, so here and here, it's 278. So that's what you can achieve with these. And the same goes actually for the T1 and T2. So if I'm gonna enable T1 with K1 and start from the bottom, and then go to T2 and start on, go to the entire cycle. In options in here, when I go to options, you'll see that uh, entire sine wave uh, takes 10 milliseconds, which was what the oscill uh, oscilloscope calculated. Obviously there is a margin of error because I'm not exactly accurate. And I should really hold this to increase the accuracy of that measurement. Now that we know our way around it, it's time to find a big problem to solve with oscilloscope. And I'm really good at finding problems. For example, this is son of POWR3, which I recently transmitized. And while doing so, I was using my FTD 
1232 programmer. It has a pin which always made me wonder how it works and now I have a perfect opportunity to find out what it does without googling. Because yes of course you can google that but where's the fun in that when you have an oscilloscope and you can find out for yourself. This is FTD1232 programmer which I use to flash ESP boards like this all my son of devices. The problem I had is that this board has a couple of pins that I don't fully understand. There's a DTR pin and CTS pin which are present and I never use them. I know I should be able to use one of those pins to reset my ESP devices so let's investigate this. Because I don't know which pin is going to be working for me I'm going to use both channels at the same time so I'm just going to hook into the uh, CTS and hook into the DTR and then use the DuPont cable to extend my ground a little bit and hook to the ground myself as well for both channels. I've got my program I com connected and I've set the following settings. The DTR pin is on the channel A which is blue, a CTS pin is yellow on channel B, I've set the resolution of the grid to 1 volt and right now I'm in a blue channel uh, on the falling edge trigger and I'm sampling at 100 milliseconds. At the bottom you can see the average voltage of the blue channel is 3.5 volts and the average uh, voltage on the channel B is 3 volts in here. So I'm not going to be concerned with the time because right now I want to see what's, ho what's happening because I know that what I need is to pull reset pin to ground in order to achieve the reset of ESP board. So let's try to emulate um, the flashing process without connecting ESP board right now. So DTR is actually creating dips. Those dips happen in succession and they repeat a couple of times. So now let's see how this behaves when I connect it with actual ESP and try to flash it. Now this one there was only single dip and then DTR pin reminded high which means I could use it for reset because when I'm attempt to flash something it pulls the pin down um, to ground and then keeps it high for the duration of the flash which means I can use DTR pin to reset my device. As a bonus I can show you how flashing the device looks like on the oscilloscope. Now this is all the data that's being sent right now to the oscilloscope. I'll be honest with you guys, as with all mini wear tools, I'm super impressed with the quality and what they provide. I mean, this unit goes around £150, which isn't terribly expensive, and you can even grab yourself a discount code at times when there is a sale. So considering the price, the quality and the features, I think it's a pretty sweet deal for every maker that is dabbling with simple electronics and would like to have oscilloscope and a bench without taking all that space. Yes, you could get a much better equipment, but let's face it, you have to start somewhere and starting off with Miniware, it's not such a terrible idea. I would like to thank Miniware for sending me this unit so I could play about and have it on my desk to troubleshoot anything really home automation related. As for now guys, you know how it works, I will have a posting schedule, so if you're interested, what I'm gonna get in my hands next, and then, well, you know how YouTube works, I'm not gonna explain that, but what I would encourage you to do, to follow me on any given social media, is probably gonna be listed there below, and start a conversation about any pro upcoming projects. As for now, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye!